Hi. <laughs> okay. Um, so I was using Safari, which doesn't support uh, webcam live. So I'm here in Chrome now. And we have Frank. So, yeah. <laughs> um, I think there's a bit of delay between when you type the comments and when I actually see them. But I thought I would start uh, talking about my plans for winter because I've had so many questions about winter in the van. Um, I am pretty nervous about this, <laughs> got to be honest. But yeah, so I've done eight winters in a van so far with no heat. And my van is very well insulated all around, but the doors are not insulated. I did put new door seals on a year ago. so. Uh, that at least I don't have the breeze coming through, but I just have a pile of blankets and then cuddle with Frank. Um, so it does get pretty cold. So I have to plan for that. So if I want to have liquid water in the morning, um, I have to sleep with some water so that I can use that to melt more water so that I have water. Cause if everything freezes solid, it's really hard to get liquid water. Um, also my, stove doesn't work well when it's really cold so I actually have to sacrifice my hands and hold the uh, canister so that I can boil water um, and my computer hates the cold so I have to cuddle with my computer under the blankets for about 20 minutes for it to be warm enough to turn on and stay on and not just crash and kill the whole battery so it's quite a bit of juggling to deal with the cold and mentally I don't really have much of a problem with it because I am pretty used to it now um, and I just change how I eat so I don't eat salads and stuff in the winter because it just freezes solid and I don't really like sacrificing blankets to try to keep my lettuce warm but I will be putting in heat sometime this winter uh, I have a Chinese diesel heater that was gifted to me that is in the mail so that should be here any day and then I will figure out how to install that and where to put it in my van because when I built the van I really wasn't um, thinking <laughs> that I would do anything like that so it does kind of scare me to put in a Chinese diesel heater just like the risk of like fire or explosion uh, which maybe I'm it's just like all in my head but there are people that have use them for years and swear by them. And so, yes. So at some point I will have heat this winter, which is very exciting. Um, I'm getting a little tired of it, honestly, uh, getting quite tired of the cold. And um, it started to cause me to get sick the last couple winters. And it was also pretty hard on Frank last winter. So, oh my God, Foresty likes blowing up diesel stuff. Yeah, no thanks. Um, <laughs> It's really hard to actually like read all the comments as they like fly by and I'm trying to just like uh, not get too nervous. Um, I like almost threw up about 20 minutes before this. So <laughs> I thought about canceling. I was just like, oh, whatever. Uh, if I'm nervous, I'm nervous. So yeah. So uh, I did have a friend suggest that I can run the diesel heater off my starter battery. Um, so I might try that because it will be quite a while longer till I have a independent power system which is an ultimate goal but yeah I want to invest in really good stuff that won't be breaking within a year so <laughs> um yeah so Frank do you want a treat I have some treats ready for Frank there you go bud come say hi <laughs> yeah he's a very good boy so uh, <laughs> yeah, so I have, um, I commissioned something I'm very excited to share. So I have all this art here. You've probably seen in my videos and her name is Darcy and she's in Olympia, Washington. And, uh, so I commissioned this, <laughs> uh, which is so beautiful. So I have this, uh, picture of Frank. Um, so I, I, I ordered that from her months ago. That was back in July. We got that ball rolling. So, um, so that's really exciting. And there's a reason I also commissioned that art piece I'll get to later. So Frank is nine years old or a bit over nine. So he was one year old when I rescued him and we've been together for over eight years now. So um, and we're almost at our five-year anniversary with this van, and this winter will be 
eight years in the van, in the van, but uh, or in a van, um, and it will be our ninth winter because I started in winter. I figured if um, uh, I figured if I start in summer, then you get carried away with the fantasy and it's so nice and it seems so easy. And then winter comes and it's pretty harsh reality in a van, especially because uh, I was not in as well insulated vans to begin with. Um, but I also didn't really have a choice when I started van life. That's just kind of what I told myself to make it seem like a good idea to start in winter. I had no money. I couldn't pay rent. So it was either live in a tent or live in the uh, crappy RV van that I was given. So um, <laughs> uh, Frank's favorite snack and meal. Frank just eats what I give him. I make him kibble with uh, a bit of canned food. In, and then he's taking a bunch of supplements right now. So I guess that's a good time to talk about his health. So unfortunately, in the last couple of years, Frank has developed arthritis in his paws, which is why his feet are so big. I've seen some comments about um, his paws being so big. So we have walked thousands of miles with a backpack on. And I think that might have played a role because he has arthritis in his paws and his elbows. So his arms are kind of like this. So um, he takes curcumin and... Um, another thing recovery or something from the same company so he takes those and then I just got him um, a few weeks ago on daily pain meds which is really helping um, improve his quality of life and he's playing more and he seems a lot happier so um, he's on daily pain meds and I started him on arthritis medication so I have to give him a needle once a week for four weeks and then once a month after that um, and I think that is supposed to be really, really effective. So that was a big reason I've been sharing online through photos and writing for more than a decade. And, oh, reconnecting. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. I just got a pop-up about my connection being unstable. But, yeah. So I've been sharing uh, my life and adventures uh, online since 2009 through photos and writing stories. And so I just was always pretty nervous about uh, YouTube and just really didn't like the idea of watching myself on video over and over and over again to edit. I'm just not that into myself. Uh, but then I realized that it's a potential to make money sharing my story, which I was already spending a lot of time doing, and that if I can make money sharing my story, then I can give Frank a better quality of life. So, um, yeah, buddy. So that's... Uh, that was the, the number one motivating factor to start this YouTube channel is built to give Frankie a better life and more comfortable life as he ages. And so when I commissioned this piece of art, um, I did so with the intention of making a sticker to sell. And the sticker, 100% of the profits from the sticker, I'm going to put towards Frank's care. So I didn't realize when I started this process about three months ago that he would end up needing a surgery. So we have a surgery scheduled for him in a bit less than a month. Um, and he has some bumps he needs to get removed. So I talked about them a little bit in a, an early video. We went to get a bump checked on his head and they tested it and they thought it was fine. They thought it was just cyst material, but it just didn't sit right with me because it would swell up and when it would swell up he would just be completely wiped out and he just like wouldn't want to do anything like even to walk like 20 meters would be too much so when we were in Squamish we went to his vet again who has been his vet as long as I've had him and I really trust her and she understands our lifestyle and my limitations with it because um, she also used to live in a van with dogs so um, she sampled the bumps and it turns out that they're mast cell tumors. Um, and so there's a couple ones in places that have been around for a while and they just knock him out when they when they flare. But the rest of the time, they're not so bad. But also when we we're in Squamish right before I saw her, he got one on his belly that's quite a bit bigger. And unfortunately, that's in a position where she said is much more likely to, um, I guess, metastasize and spread to organs so he's getting them all removed early November um, and uh, they're going to get sent off for testing and he's going to get ultrasounds and we're just going to do everything we can to make sure he's clear okay how can you guys get stickers 
I will let you know when my website is up. I really wanted it up for today. So badly I wanted it up for today. And um, my old domain is being really slow releasing it to my new domain host where I have a friend who is helping me build my website so I can have a shop and it's secure and easy payment and all that stuff. So I really wanted it uh, set up for today. Unfortunately, it's not. And it looks like it's going to be not till Monday or Tuesday next week. Um, that I'll have the sticker shop up. Um, but yeah, they just, <laughs> they're just not releasing it. It's like a horrible breakup and I just want closure and they're just not giving me my stuff back. So yeah, I will make an announcement, uh, when those come out. So I've also been saving, um, people have sent me money through PayPal and I've not taken any of that out to buy anything nice for me. I've bought Frank treats and I've invested in the stickers. So anything that's left is going to help go towards his surgery. So as well as um, the money I've made through Patreon, I also have not spent any of that on me and that's going to go towards Frank. So anything that's come in related to my channel, I've scrolled aside for Frank, um, which is really nice. And when Frank is fully taken care of, I will put the rest into a power system so I can keep making videos. So yeah, they're a four inch sticker. I'm really excited. And I also got little ones made up for patrons. So I'm excited to send those out to all the patrons also. Um, uh, so yeah, <laughs> but uh, these are just like samples that came and I have lots coming next week. I'm really excited. And so that's part of why I've been so busy lately is figuring that out, figuring out packaging, uh, getting custom stamps for return address and all that kind of stuff. So Frank's surgery is estimated to be around three thousand uh, dollars Canadian. So yeah, and that's just um, the estimate. So we'll see when we get into that. So that's uh, that's too bad, but I mean I have no problem spending um, all my money on Frank, and yeah, his uh, <laughs> uh, and also his medication. So. Um, now, right now, AdSense is covering his food and his arthritis medication and his pain meds. So it's going to be really nice that he'll be in better spirits soon. Um, and hopefully just be able to do some of the things he likes to do. He is getting old, but uh, he is old beyond his years because of the arthritis. So uh, do a GoFundMe. No, I really don't want to do a GoFundMe. A few years ago, um, Frank had a freak emergency uh, infection. We were hiking a trail on the Sunshine Coast. And his whole leg just started to swell up and he was wiped out and he couldn't even walk. And I had to carry him over my shoulders at the time he was 75 pounds. So I carried him out. Um, I carried him out to a dirt road and had in reach somebody who came and picked us up. And he ended up in the vet for five nights. And that was about $5,000. And he was saved by a GoFundMe. And so I would rather not do that again. Um, I feel like between the donations I've already received from PayPal and through sticker sales, I should be able to get there and cover his cost. Uh, of his surgery. I've also been working through all this that I've been getting all the stickers sorted out, my website design sorted out, working on the van, editing videos, all that. I've also been working at a farm down the road. So I've been very busy burning the candle at both ends the last few weeks um, just to just to try to look after everything. And I've, ha I've seen a couple of people mention Super Chats and I've intentionally chosen not to do that because um, YouTube takes 30%, which is a way bigger cut than PayPal or Patreon does. And they already take 50%, about 50% of the AdSense. So YouTube is making enough money off me. Um, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I would just, uh, rather not have them easily make more. So I brought more treats for Frank because it's a celebration. Here you go, bud. So... Um, so yeah, that's the update with Frank's health. So he has good days and bad days. He's had mostly good days the last few weeks, which is really nice. The cool weather helps. And then because I've been busy working on the van and everything, he's just been chilling and resting and he's taking antihistamines daily to try to keep them from flaring. So that does kind of knock him out, but it's better that he just rests um, and they don't react until we can get them taken out. So yeah, that's the update with Frank. So that does mean we're going to the coast uh, in a few weeks when the engine is done. Um, I got all the last of the parts for the van today. So there's a couple of videos before you'll see it fire up. But I think this weekend we are, are going to be trying to fire it up. And we're just going to hope that goes well. I will film all of it so you will see if it doesn't. 
So it's not running yet, but uh, we are very, very close. Um, <laughs> and then, yeah, so I have to go to the coast for her surgery. I have a few specialist appointments for myself. Um, so it's going to be just a busy time over there. And while he, was re while he is recovering from surgery, we're going to go spend some time with a special friend um, who is building out a step van. So Frank will just chill and I get to help on this uh, build project, which is really cool because uh, my van is fully built out. And I have no need to really change much of anything in here. Um, look, we got two Franks. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I don't get to have any more fun building in my van. That's all been done for years. So, um, yeah. <laughs> so I'm free. Now I'll answer questions. <laughs> so I've talked about Frank and winter plans. After November, I have no plans. I have no idea what I'm doing. I have skis. I have snowshoes. I have ice axe and crampons. I would really love to chase dry rock if the Okanagan stays dry. I would love to be bouldering and climbing, maybe make some climbing friends and spend time on a rope and just uh, improve my balance and core strength and just comfort in exposed situations so that when mountain season rolls around again, I am ready to crush and move fast and feel uh, just really confident. So yeah, how is my health? My health is doing pretty good. It's a lot better than it was this time last year. As soon as I'm done with this van product, I'm going to sleep for about three days and just rest because I can feel my system weakening. Um, and I will be seeing an immunologist when I go to the city. So I'm kind of nervous because I do have to spend two days and a night in the city because I have back-to-back -back appointments. So um, that's Vancouver. So I've never actually spent a night in Vancouver in my van, but I'm excited Uh, try that out. <laughs> uh, do I truck back hunt in the winter? I do. I have chains. I have quite a bit of experience on back roads and judging where my van can go. I'm not equipped with like four by four winch or stuff like that. Um, one day I would like to put a locking differential in the back and when the transmission needs work, we'll upgrade to a four by four, but not until then because my transmission is in really good shape. But I do um, I do get out there. I am okay driving on some snow and uh, scoping out roads that like aren't really snowy and just really keeping an eye on the weather. So who cares for Frank when I go to work? Oh, mostly Frank has always come with me foraging and farm work. Um, the farm down the road, uh, just like Health Canada regulations, he's not allowed there. So he's been hanging out here um, in the van or inside with my mom. So little Alice has a uh, kennel cough right now. So we're keeping them separate. So Frank's been staying in here and it's just a kilometer away. So I ride my bike and, um, and then I come back quickly for him. So, uh, oh yeah. Do you, oh, so do I travel a lot in winter? Uh, I've done eight winters in the van. <laughs> Sorry, there's just a really loud dirt bike. Three winters have gone down to the U S I tend to go down a bit mid, uh, mid winter and come back late spring so I've spent three winters gone trips down to the U.S. but the places I like to go also tend tend to be pretty cold so it's not that I necessarily end up somewhere warm but mostly I just travel around southern BC so um yeah uh, <laughs> um so yeah any other questions um <laughs> dirt bike farts yeah so there's like a we live in a rural area that's unincorporated so there's not really like rules or enforcement so it gets a little crazy it's a little um I don't know it's rural <laughs> it's rural living so um do I have any videos of when I was living in the tent I don't think I have videos but I have quite a bit of photos so if I find that I'm spending a lot of time in the van this winter in hibernation mode I will put together some story time uh kind of videos using photos and tell stories because I have uh you know over seven years of van life before I was making these videos I have two plus years living in a minivan that was I never even built it out it was just a pile of stuff for over two years and about five months living stationary in a tent as well as like my PCT through hike and stuff like that so uh before truck I was in a 2001 Mazda MPV minivan so 
it was small. I could not sit up straight. That was a big thing here is I wanted to sit up straight. So I spent two years with the roof like this, like hunched over. And it got really bad for my back, um, even though I hunch uh, quite a bit. So are your parents cool with you being home so long? Yes. <laughs> yeah, the, we get along really well. And um, they don't mind me being here. And usually when I leave, they're they're not sick of me yet. And they say I can stay longer. So that's great. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we get along well. I also spend quite a bit of time on the island with my grandpa. So that's really nice. Um, uh, if I'm broke or doing projects, then I'm not spending gas or food. Uh, my mom cooks us dinner here pretty much every single night, which is why I haven't seen any cooking in my videos. So um, am I still going out on date nights with myself? I've been really busy the last few weeks. I need to take myself on a date night. So maybe once my van is running, I will do that. Um, but mostly it's just being like crash in the van and have beer and watch YouTube, which is still a pretty nice way to spend time. So, um, I do have some questions that were asked before. So one, uh, Matt asked, uh, if I have any plans of returning to stationary life and I don't, I have no intention or dreams of returning to stationary life. I would love to have an off grid property where I could go if I needed to or if I wanted to spend a season growing food or when Frank's really old if we could have a property with a creek that he could play in and I could just like grow some vegetables and let him just chill that would be really nice but uh housing property everything is just completely just off the charts uh here in BC so I don't actually see that anytime in my future and I find that when I'm stationary too long I get uninspired and unmotivated and I start to really suffer with my mental health um, so like even sometimes in the van, I'll just be around the same spot for too long and I kind of get like stuck <laughs> and then I start to get pretty depressed. So, uh, I find moving just like gives me something to do and distracts me. And I, I find that like moving around a little bit, um, is much better for my mental health. I drive half the average Canadian. So compared to most van lifers, I hardly drive. I really like to get the most uh, experience for my gas dollar. So I'm very efficient about my driving choices and I don't like to go back and forth and zigzaggy zoom all over. Um, so yeah, I'd rather just drive at most an hour a day and then just chill out for a few days or a week. So another question I had uh, from Mike. <laughs> so hey, Mike, <laughs> he has been a huge fan since the beginning. Uh, he was asking what I hope the impact of my videos is and I have a couple um one is that I get very easily overstimulated which is why my videos don't have music um I make the type of video that I like to watch which is a lot less sensory input at the same time um some videos will have people talking and the music in the background and that's just I had a very serious brain injury when I was younger so I prefer the lower stimulation um, so I like to make videos that people who are like me can enjoy watching. Um, and I also hope to inspire people to collect skills um, and to get, have confidence to like go out and do things so, or try to learn things. So living in the van, I have so much free time. So I use that free time to do things that I would otherwise be spending money on. So then I save money. And so I spend my time learning skills life costs less, I have to work less, I need less money, I have more free time. And it's like this, uh, it's like a positive feedback cycle of free time and money. So instead of trading my time for money to pay for things, I try to do the opposite. So I would love if more people uh, went out and learned how to do things for themselves, that would be a great thing um, about this channel. So um, and then I've been asked if I'm gonna have mushroom foraging this season, because it's mushroom season right now. And yes, uh, in Tuesday's video, I go out mushroom picking. So you'll see uh, if you're on Instagram, you already know what kind of mushroom I was picking. So, um, and I had somebody ask if I get bored and I don't really. There was a time when I did, um, but I don't really get bored anymore. I will just meditate or stretch or if I find I get restless, then I just look at my to-do list and do a task. Um, but I can just sit and. Uh, uh, I can just sit and like watch the trees grow like it's fine <laughs> like, I, I don't really need like a lot of input to 
be occupied and I'm very comfortable with myself. So my personal belief is that a lot of a lot of boredom comes from being uncomfortable being solely with yourself. And since I'm very comfortable with myself, I don't really get bored. Um, so I saw, oh yeah, there, how did I get the brain injury? I ha had a skateboard accident when I was 16 and I smashed my head uh, on the ground <laughs> very hard. And I seizured for about 15 minutes and my lips turned blue and I wasn't breathing. And um, I went to some other worlds and then I came back to life. And so... <laughs> And it changed me forever. I was a different person before. I was very social. I liked to go to busy places. I loved to be around crowds. And um, after that, I didn't. <laughs> I didn't spend as much time with people. I avoided anywhere busy. I chose a quieter existence is what I could handle. And so I think that uh, head injury played a huge role in who I am now. Um, and I'm not sad about it. <laughs> so yeah, but uh, I'm pretty lucky to have pulled through that. So um, yeah. And uh, yeah, I was also asked about my mental health routine, because I seem so calm and positive about things. And uh, that is a very complicated question. That is uh, uh, just like such a huge, huge thing. But choosing to uh, live this lifestyle was largely inspired by um, having struggles with mental health and feeling trapped in a cycle of working a job I didn't really enjoy to pay rent when I actually just wanted to be outside doing stuff or or just not doing stuff just to be outside in nature in a quiet setting just like letting my mind just like do its thing so um, I I filled multiple positive mental health uh, tick boxes in choosing this lifestyle because I wasn't working for somebody who was taking the money and living a lifestyle I didn't agree with. I wasn't giving somebody my money for rent so that they could make a commodity. I also had my time to look after myself. And so a lot of these years of van life have been working on my mental health. So I'm um, almost eight years in and um, it's gone well. <laughs> There's been great improvements because uh, it hasn't always been so great uh, no do I watch the news on a, no I don't watch the news ever I basically don't watch the news I don't read news I only really know about news if somebody tells me about something or it's a local issue that I've been choosing to keep track of I was very obsessed with watching the news when I was in college and it just made me miserable and angry and I just needed to tell everyone about things and that caused a lot of negative interactions with people and it wasn't effective and a lot of it was things I would get so caught up in that I couldn't have a positive effect on. So I realized that I have a better impact on the world if I just spread joy and cheer and just smile at people in the street. And maybe that will help them through a hard day. And then um, just like focus on spreading positive change in my immediate environment, then worrying about the weight of the world. And so I choose a lot of my lifestyle choices are for me to feel good about the impact I have and try to lessen my own impact. But it's not a healthy thing for me to try to change other people's lifestyles. Um, there's no reason for me to get too invested in what other people are doing. And so they'll do what they feel is right for them. And I'll do what I feel is right for me. And that's just enough. <laughs> yeah. So um so my, so hard to see the questions going by uh let's see oh boy okay sorry <laughs> it's like uh about work finding work on the road with a dog um so far most farms will accept dogs and foraging which i did a lot for many years would make my money from foraging is fine to have dogs with you um and then like a lot of odd jobs but if you're in a moderate climate and your dog is well trained it's pretty easy just to take like uh, small shifts um, I used to work at a doggy daycare and he didn't always come with me but he could just chill in the van so um, if your cost of living is low there's really no need to work eight hour shifts so you can just work five hour shifts a couple times a week if you want um, lots of van lifers have regular jobs in towns um, they're not necessarily nomadic or seasonal so I did the math once and 
if I were to work full time at McDonald's, it would only take three months to pay for the entire year. So it's not a lot of money that um, I need. And if you can make more than minimum wage, then that's even less work you need to do. Um, I used to work in geology and that would only take nine days of work to pay for my entire year. So, um, and that's surviving as like dirt bagging. It's not the most comfortable, but it's better than working a job you don't like. Um, <laughs> okay. Um, let's see. Do I watch any other van lifers? Mostly I haven't. I just started watching YouTube three years ago. And at that point, I'd been living in a van for almost five years. So I didn't really find much of the van life content appealing or representative of my experience with van life. Um, but there are some people I've been watching who used to live in vans and they don't anymore. So one of them is Wild We Roam. They're a really sweet couple. So they were in a van, then they did a whole sailboat thing. And now they're uh, living in Hawaii with a dog. So they're just like really nice. And I like their insight on things. So I enjoy their channel. Um, but I prefer to watch mostly uh, like tiny home stuff, like people on land that are doing something that I'm not doing. Right. So some people that are getting to farm or have like projects that take up bigger space. So one channel I really enjoy is Isabel Page and, you know, watching her, um, like spin wool or like weave blankets on these big apparatus I couldn't have in the van. That's what I really like because it's different than my lifestyle. So do I have any siblings? Um, <laughs> I do. <laughs> you might think I'm an only child, but I have a younger brother. He's 18 months younger. Um, we get along. We just don't talk much. So uh, <laughs> you'll probably never see him in a video. He's married. He has a real job. And um he's busy so <laughs> yeah <laughs> but yeah I have a brother he looks um a lot like me and my dad <laughs> we all look like family so um Joey okay so I've seen a couple questions come up about Foresty Forest and I'm not going to answer any questions to do with him he's a very private person and I just don't feel like it's my place to talk uh about anything to do with him so yeah, um, hopefully you guys will just uh, be cool with that. But yeah, I'd rather just talk about me <laughs> and Frank <laughs> and my life here. So and not. Yeah. Are the winters dry or damp? So here where my parents are in the Kootenays, it's quite a bit drier. But I grew up on the coast, um, on Vancouver Island, and it's usually 100% humidity. So it's, uh, it's pretty wet. I did have mold issues last year. Um, for the first time in many winters, I had mold issues. So that sucked. <laughs> I had to do strip some things and there was a lot of cleaning. And luckily I had friends around to help me with that. So I see a lot of love for Isabel. Awesome. When will you see my tiny home tour? I don't know. Um, they said I can message them to bug them about it, but I filmed it like close to two months ago. So I imagine any week now that tour should come out. Um, what is the funnest place you have been to with the least people? Um, anywhere I am with Frank. <laughs> uh, maybe that's like really cheesy, but the time we celebrated his birthday and I set the hammock up on the log hanging in the river. That was really awesome. I really enjoyed that. But um, I pretty much just, I have fun like wherever I am. I'm pretty easy to please. So um, yeah. Okay. I'm trying to, I'm looking for questions now. Uh, so, oh man. Do I ever pick magic mushrooms? No, <laughs> no, I'm not. I have no interest in uh, trying to pick any mushroom that is easily uh, confused with ones that are deadly. I only pick mushrooms that are tasty food that are very clearly what they are. I have been poisoned in my learning stages of foraging um, and had a very, very rough night. This was when I was living in the tent. Uh, I mistook the mushroom in my desire to find something to eat 
and I got very sick and I threw up and I was too delirious to stop Frank from eating it. So then he got sick and he threw up and some other people had watched me pick and eat these mushrooms and they didn't know I got sick. So they went out and they picked the mushrooms and they all got sick. So it was a horrible, horrible situation and exactly why you don't just copy other people with what they're doing when it comes to picking wild food. No, you need to be certain for yourself if you're going to do that. So I have um, about a half dozen mushrooms I'm very comfortable picking and I just try to stick to that. So um, do I think the van lifestyle is doable for someone that works remote? Yeah, I think so. I think if you're okay with sacrificing some of the comforts of living in a house. So of course there are vans these days that you don't really have to sacrifice much if you're willing to spend a quarter million dollars on it. But um, this van I bought for 2,600 Canadian dollars, which at the time was about 2,000 US dollars. And over the years, I have turned it into what it is now. So um, uh, do I ever take longer trips? I've never driven east of the Rockies. I've actually only been to the Canadian Rockies one day and it wasn't in my van. I went with a friend. Um, so I've been as far east as like Denver, Boulder in Colorado, but I've just done from the Yukon down to Mexico. I've never gone eastward. Um, part of that was because it's really, really far and I didn't trust my van. So now that I have a new engine, it's something that is a potential to do. I have some friends um, on the east coast I would like to see again. So um, Hopefully you have a weapon or two to stay safe. Yes, <laughs> I totally do. <laughs> um, many. <laughs> so border crossings are usually interesting. So uh, will I travel outside BC? I'll definitely go to the Yukon again. And I'll probably tiptoe into the edge of Alberta. Um, but no plans because winter is coming and it's going to be really cold. So we'll have to test out that heater first and see how that goes. Um, am I going to do any collaborations with other YouTubers. Uh, I would love to. Uh, there is a couple that I enjoy. Um, they're in Canada. They're dealing with a situation right now. That, um, and um, I would be meeting up with other YouTubers to do collaborations. If they're people I would be into hanging out with in real life, I don't really want to meet up with people just for the sake of collaboration because I feel like that would be really awkward. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> yeah let's see oh another so have I traveled to Europe I did um in 2008 I traveled to Spain with school for geology so I spent two weeks mapping rocks in Spain and then two weeks traveling by myself throughout Spain um, and I also went into Gibraltar which is technically the UK so that's the only place I've been in Europe but I really enjoyed the lifestyle and I would love to go back someday but when I rescued Frank I promised him I wouldn't fly. It's really dangerous to fly with dogs. I don't want to do that. So as long as Frank is with me, then we are moving by vehicle. So uh, what do I do about using the restroom, which I call a washroom up here in Canada, at least around here, everyone I know calls it a washroom, in bad weather. Um, you hear when the rain stops and you run out and take care of things. If you cannot wait for the rain to stop, I do have a pee bucket. Um, so I can pee in the van. Um, otherwise, I just take an umbrella. It's not a big deal. I mean, I'm waterproof. So <laughs> yeah, it's it's not a big deal. Or just like dry. If it's like horrendously bad weather and I don't want to go out or it's like really hard to dig. So then it would take a while. Um, I would just drive to an outhouse or a cafe or a grocery store and use the washroom there. Um, yeah, so I don't have any... Thing other than like a pee bucket inside so or like a I use like a giant sauerkraut jar with a lid so um uh, I have had emergency situations <laughs> where it's the, that's the hard thing about being in an urban area is you can't just step outside the van and go to the bathroom so um I have had to poop in a bag before which uh, sucks but yeah when you're desperate and <laughs> it's knocking you just figure it out it's yeah it's uh you just get over being grossed out about things. So, <laughs> um, yeah. So, um, have I ever, have I ever considered offering a guided van life ad adventure? No, I've actually never thought of that. Um, yeah, it's never crossed my mind, but maybe that's uh, something that will turn in the head during this winter. So, 
Have I ever considered a hand bidet? No, but hiking, I had a lot of friends that did that and they swear by it. So, um, yeah, <laughs> uh, we'll just see. Uh, yeah, I, I have pea cloth, so I just have uh, like bandanas and then I wash them so I don't have to use tons of um, uh, toilet paper. So, yeah, <laughs> who hasn't pooped in a bag? I mean, I think most people have probably not pooped in a bag, but I like your attitude. So, um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, so. <laughs> <laughs> have I ever climbed in the bugaboos I have in 2012 I went on a week-long climbing trip there and it was really fun it was really scary because um, me and my partner didn't we had quite a bit of climbing experience and trad climbing experience and leading experience but neither of us were super strong climbers um, for our experience level and we had never done um, multi-pitch trad in an alpine remote environment so yeah the bugaboos was just like by the end of the week my nerves were shot I ended up bailing off the last climb uh one pitch in I just could not do it anymore the glacier travel everything was just it was so much but um that was a long time ago I have a lot of experience since then and I would love to go back someday with somebody I trust being on a rope with um yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I see. Uh, Renee says she can introduce me to Steve Wallace. That would be really, really fun. Um, yeah. So that would be really fun because I love stealth camping. And on the PCT, I slept in some pretty weird places because you're just too tired and you know, maybe you don't want to be in the rain and you're tired and you don't want to have wet gear. So you just sleep in a train tunnel or a bathroom or wherever um, in the trees on the edge of town because it's close to the grocery store and you don't want to walk further because your feet are sore. So, yeah, that would be a really fun thing to do. Um, so if you are just joining the chat, I recommend just once this ends, watch uh, for the update on Frank because it was quite a bit. It's at the beginning of the video, but long story short, um, there will be stickers coming very soon. Um, and I will make sure everyone hears about that <laughs> um, when my store is finally ready um, to fundraise for his upcoming surgery. So um, I'm just going to quickly see if I can get uh, a light on back there because it's getting dark out. Um, that's a little better oh <laughs> that did not help much <laughs> I have my lights on full blast oh oh I've got a little bit of more brightness there apparently it dims itself in time so um <laughs> yeah oh what kind of music do I listen to I listen to a lot of different kinds of music lately I've been especially into um like modern folk music alternative folk indie folk um, and I listen to a lot of dance music, like electronic music. So um, I really enjoy solo dance parties. So sometimes I will drive down a dirt road, start a fire, get really drunk and dance by myself all night. So um, <laughs> uh, yeah, so I like dance music and I like a little bit of everything. My, the music on my uh, phone right now is super eclectic. Um, I don't listen to a lot of like kind of mainstream top 40. Um, I don't mind it for a driving day, but mostly I'm not too into that. So, and then I am a lifelong huge Pink Floyd fan, which is where the quote comes from. Um, and I've ha been asked about that a few times. Um, and somebody commented recently that they liked the Stephen Hawking quote. So it's kind of embarrassing to say, but I did not know that Pink Floyd was quoting Stephen Hawking when I put their lyric on my arm. I thought, oh, they're just using a cute, like, robot voice. Anyways, it says, it doesn't have to be like this. All we need to do is make sure we keep talking. And that is um, from the Division Bell album, which was their last album in 1994. And my parents, who are super cool, took me and my brother to that concert. So I did see Pink Floyd live on their last tour. Um, I was about seven or something. <laughs> no, eight. I don't know. <laughs> so, yeah, that was that was really, really cool. So. Um, <laughs> yeah, so, <laughs> um, 
Have I ever had a chance to meet and stay with First Nations people? Absolutely. Um, foraging has brought me uh, the opportunity to meet a lot of Indigenous people. And I've been welcomed onto their land and welcomed onto their porches and into their homes and got to hang out with them and learn from them and hear their stories about the local land and the history. So that's something um, I've always been really grateful for those opportunities. And um, and uh, yeah, it just uh, it's a nice thing about traveling slow and being open to talking to people. So I talk to a lot of people when I'm out and if it leads to more conversation, then I, uh, I go with it, right? So yeah, it's been really nice. I've learned quite a bit of foraging uh, from Indigenous people. So um, I think everyone you meet has something to teach you. So you should just talk to strangers sometimes or listen to strangers especially. So um, ooh, we have a professional forager in the house. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Um, living in a van makes it hard to store tons of food. So um, that's why uh, truck is a one time. When I had that in mind was canning berries and being able to carry tons of jars of berries. So I did not manage to can any wild berries this year, which is um, <laughs> kind of sad, but it was uh, it was a busy summer avoiding smoke and fire. How old am I? Okay. I thought this would come up and I have no problem sharing my age. I'm 36 and I will be 37 in February, which I'm very excited about because I like the number 37. I don't really like the number 36. It's been a good year, but I did not celebrate my birthday last year. I took it off the internet and I kept it a uh, secret. <laughs> so I did a celebration at 35 and when I turn 37, I will do something. <laughs> so yeah. Um, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. Oh, see, someone's the same age as me. Nice. All right. So, how does one get over an instinctual bear fear? Um, I was pretty scared of bears before I encountered a bear. And um, the first few encounters with bears, my heart was racing. I was pretty nervous. And um, after you've had dozens of bear encounters, um, you're less scared of them. It just takes time and exposure. And also working at the dog kennel, um, I would be in charge of 20 to 40 dogs at a time by myself. And the goal is to keep them from fighting each other. So you get very attuned to body language and a bear and a dog's body language are completely different, but it is a skill to learn how to read um, like nonverbal communication. So with all my bear encounters, I also observe their body language and um, one of them in particular living in the tent would come by basically every day for months. So you just get familiar with it, um, which, <laughs> you know, maybe isn't the most helpful thing because you have to be scared and encounter bears to be able to not be scared of them. So, um, <laughs> uh, yeah. So uh, my, bir my birthday is February 23rd. So I am a Pisces. And for those that are into astrology, I am Pisces sun. Aries moon and Scorpio rising. So there you go. Now you know everything about me. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> Apparently I don't look 36. I don't feel like it. I don't, I don't feel it at all. But and the, the low quality is hiding my age. But I have all these lines here from years of being amazed at the stupid stuff people do. <laughs> so that's, I think why I wear a hat a lot now is that it hides it and then I look younger. So, yeah. <laughs> um, is there anyone that isn't a fan of living in a van? Yeah. There's like this whole trend of why I quit van life videos. And uh, I don't know if I think a lot of people who don't like living in vans got into it chasing the fantasy of the social media van life. And they just weren't really realistic or honest with themselves. And I think if they had been, or they'd had a chance to talk to me, they might have decided beforehand it wasn't for them, or they wouldn't have been disappointed when it was harder and less glamorous than they expected. So um, most people quit before two years. If you meet someone who's lived in a van for two years, that would be considered a long time. So um, <laughs> yeah, so. Yes. Oh, I see a comment here. I love the diversity of your followers. So many different generations coming together. 
most of my uh most of you guys are my age or older so i think only like nine percent are actually younger than me um and all over the world it's so cool to see and it was 50 50 male and female um until i hung out with uh forest forest and his audience is mostly male so it kind of pushed it into the more male and uh subscriber so um so uh, what are my plans for the cold months? Yeah, um, I talked about that earlier in the video, but I have no plans after November and I have zero hope that the border is going to open. So I'm not even thinking about that and I'm not going to fly anywhere. So uh, at this point, I'm just expecting that the border won't open and that I'll just be in BC all winter. So um, <laughs> yeah. Hmm. This is one of my favorite beers, by the way, Glitter Bomb by Philips. Um, I have quite a bit of food sensitivities, but the Philips beer doesn't disagree with me. So I tend to stick to them as much as possible because I know it's safe for me. Biggest goal for 2022. Survive. <laughs> um, I haven't even thought into 2022, honestly. I have not thought that far. Um, I would like to spend more time scrambling more difficult solid rock in the mountains. I'm not too interested in giant choss piles, um, but I would like to spend time on a rope in the alpine with someone. So um, that's why I'm hoping to be able to spend some more time climbing this winter. Uh, climbing was something I did for years and years and years. And then in 2017, I reached all the goals I had set for myself with bouldering and tread climbing. And I guess I didn't set big enough goals because I reached them all and I just felt like, okay, I'm done. And we, Frank and I went and we did a lot of summits and it got really scary. And there were some really close calls that I will tell stories about in the future. But that led me to decide to, um, uh, through hike the PCT so I could enjoy the mountains without being worried about us falling off of them. So now Frank is a little old for the type of scrambling we used to do. He can do a casual day out in the mountains, but nothing too big. And next summer, it'll probably be less than he did this summer. So I got to get fast so I can do that um, while he's comfortable in the van. Oh, finger tattoos. Um, this one is earth and this one is fire and There'll be air and water eventually. They're stick and poke, so I do them myself. It's just the elements. Um, and I do them when it feels right. Uh, so what do I like to do for Halloween? I don't really celebrate Halloween. I don't really celebrate any holidays of any season whatsoever. I barely celebrate my birthday. Um, yeah, I celebrate milestones. So I like numbers. I'm a numbers person. So I like round numbers, even numbers, even percentages. or quarterly percentages, 25, 50, 75, that type of thing. So I am more likely to celebrate uh, achievements or milestones that way instead of the conventional holidays that most people would celebrate. I do celebrate the solstices and the equinoxes as well as the new moon. I don't do the full moon as much, but I do usually do something for the new moon with myself every uh, cycle. So yeah. <laughs> um, Yes, I have been to the States a few times. I've uh, gone down three winters. So I talked a bit more about that earlier in the chat. So favorite milestone to celebrate? <sighs> Probably like a new longest distance walked or something. So uh, right now, mine and Frank, our record is 64 kilometers in a day, which is 40 miles. So I would love to have a 100 kilometer day someday just to round that out. Um, so that's like I guess would be one of my big goals would be to walk 100 kilometers in a day or like in a row like a without stopping to sleep you know just like yeah one long walk um what do I like to read so I don't uh really like to read creative writing because I like to write and I am also very susceptible to taking on other people's voice um you might have noticed in some videos I sound a little bit like Foresty Forest and that's from being around him and I'm very easily influenced that way. So for writing, uh, for reading, I read spiritual texts um, and like scripture and stuff. And I read reference books. I love reading guidebooks, natural history, 
um, like plant ID guides. Like I will look through a plant ID guide for hours, but I'm not too much into reading um, like writing, creative writing, stories, that kind of stuff. So my van had a little under 200,000 kilometers before the engine swap. So we're down to zero now. <laughs> um, oh, the guidebook I posted in one of my videos was Scrambles of Southwest BC written by Matt Gunn. It has been out of print for a while, but he did a small run of prints you can only buy off his website, which I think is Cairn Publishing. Mm, sorry, so you can um, you can only buy that directly from him now. Uh, it was published in, I think the first copy was in 2006 or something, so some of the logging road information is a little off, but it's still great for getting me out there, so. <laughs> What are all the funny looking mushrooms in my van? I wonder if you're referring to these. Um, and those are like live edge uh, turned mushrooms, a gift from my friend Angus in Ireland. Um, and I do really like mushroom foraging and stuff. So like there's mushrooms in the sticker and it was one of the things I used to um, <laughs> uh, Any pest before Frank? I, we had cats growing up, so we never had family dogs, but we had cats growing up, and I used to be a fish person uh, when I lived in houses. I had fish from the age of 10 onwards, and I also used to have saltwater tanks, which are a lot of work, and as I got into camping, I realized it wasn't compatible because when you have corals and crabs and shrimp and sea anemones and all that kind of stuff, you basically can't leave them, like, ever. <laughs> stuff goes wrong <laughs> very fast, so... Um, I have tried to think of how I can have fish in the van, but because I winter in Canada and don't have heat and basically have lots of extreme temperature changes, there's no responsible way to have fish in the van. <laughs> I like that Frank's just like snoozing there. <laughs> He's like, mom's so boring. Um, the best part of van living is <sighs> having a cheaper budget and <laughs> just like not being able to spend as little money as I want to which gives me free time to do things that are free. So I used to work in gear stores and I've been lucky to get a lot of pro deals and sponsored gear over the years. So I'm very well outfitted to do the things I like to do without buying gear um, or spending money. So I just spend money on gas, food. Now I have a phone bill, which is pretty new to me. Um, and my insurance is really cheap because of where my parents live. Um, and because I'm in Canada, I don't have to pay health insurance or any of those types of things. And I'm also really irresponsible. So when I travel, I don't get travel insurance or anything like that. So um, <laughs> um, I think my biggest fish tank was about 50 liters uh, or 50, 50 gallons. Yeah, 50 gallons. Um, but it's, it's uh, harder to regulate saltwater tanks in a small tank. So the bigger the tank, the better. But like it's a really expensive hobby. And I used to work at the store in exchange for corals. Um, what type of sleeping bag? I have a Western mountaineering sleeping bag. And they made me a custom expander so that Frank fits in the sleeping bag with me. And it's the like water resistant outer material because it's pretty moist where I am. And I got that at cost from the company years ago. So um, yeah, <laughs> they're so expensive. I wouldn't be able to. Uh, uh, okay, so we've already covered music and age. So yes. Um, <laughs> Can we get a van drag race against Forrest? <laughs> uh, that that would be fun though, but no. <laughs> oh, I think he's got me on rubber contact, so he'd probably win. Um, ooh, slacklining. How did I get into rope walking? So slacklining was uh, kind of like created by climbers, I think, years ago as a way to just kill time and build core strength and balance when they were resting their skin. Because when you climb, you lose a lot of skin, so your fingers get really sensitive. So climbers were doing that, and I picked it up through climbers uh, climbing. So I started slack lining in 2009. Um, and at the time, there wasn't really much for like store kits you could buy. So we all just walked on one inch webbing, and that's what I use. Um, my slack line was gifted to me from Heavy from the old slack line park in Squamish. Um, so that was really nice to have it donated to me for helping out with some of the old Heavy Fests that used to happen. And I've been using it for years. Do I have nature photos to sell by downloading? Um, no, I have not 
ever printed photos. I've been asked for years. I've never printed photos for that or downloading. But one of the perks of um, two of the tiers on Patreon is um, screensavers. So I'm about to put up the first load of photos for that. So I'm curating photo sets um, like every month so that you can have nice photos, backdrops for your uh, desktop or cell phone or whatever. So um, do I ever top, top rope? So top rope climbing, yes, I love top roping. I have a device that allows me to fix the line and top rope solo alone so I can climb routes without anyone else. Um, and do I plan to do more biking? Yes, um, I've been bike commuting to work lately. Um, but I would like, yeah, heavy hooves. <laughs> yeah. So I, I would like to do more biking. Ideally, I will get um, conditioned enough to be able to tow Frank in a cart on rail trails so we can go on long distance adventures together, but he doesn't have to walk. So I've been thinking of that for years. And so um, when I'm able to, I will invest in, invest in the gear to do that with Frank. And he also really loves paddle boarding. So I used to work for an adventure company that I got free use of paddle boards. So Frank and I used to do a lot of paddle boarding. And he loves it. He loves the water, as you know. So, um, yeah. So those are kind of a couple big items I would like to have in my life someday. Um, yeah. Am I ever scared at night sleeping in my van? Pretty much not. Um, more often than not, if I'm down a back road and somebody comes, they leave. <laughs> <laughs> because they're probably creeped out by me especially when this van was white and rusty and it was pretty sketchy looking so yeah people just leave um if I'm in a city I'll lock the doors and Frank's a good alarm but um I used to be quite a light sleeper in the van and I can sleep through anything now I just got used to it <laughs> yeah so um what time is it Wow, I've been talking for 40 minutes. That's amazing. And there's over 400 people here. I just <laughs> That's like kind of weird to me because I just feel like the most regular person in the world. Um, Frank is, when I rescued him, they said he was Australian cattle dog mix. Um, I never knew what the mix was. Um, everyone has their opinion about that. But uh, several videos ago, somebody commented that he's a Queensland healer. And I've heard that a few times. So they're First time commented their parents bred Queensland healers. So she said that he was a very good example of a Queensland healer. So we're going with that. But I've also had quite a few Australian people call him a dingo. So um, he was pretty wild when I got him. So I get uh, how that would be suiting. Um, yeah. I got a 200 amp alternator. It should be here any day. Um, which is twice as many amps as the alternator that was in it which was already, uh, so it was 100 stock. So I got a 200 because the bigger ones were like from like a really fancy high-end company and they were super expensive. So we'll just see how this 200 amp goes. But a lot of like uh, minivans and stuff are only like 60 amp. So I think it should do pretty well. Um, how, how do me and the van not and my food not freeze? I'm just a very tolerant person. It was very warm under the blankets with Frank. Um, when I woke up this morning, it was zero degrees in here, Celsius, which is freezing. It was colder than that outside, but it was only zero in here. But under the blankets, like it was toasty, like we're super warm. So it's just a little hard to get out of bed. But my favorite nut, um, I used to really, really love hazelnuts and almonds, but I've developed an uh, allergy to them. So I like cashews now. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> uh, my ears get really itchy if I eat almonds or hazelnuts. Uh, hazelnuts, if they have the little skin on. Otherwise, if it's in something processed, I seem to be able to eat it. So, um, oh, somebody was asking about my coffee. I haven't roasted coffee in a while um, because I've been poaching coffee off my parents and drinking theirs. But yeah, I buy it from greenbeanery.ca, which if you're not in Canada, um, would be unnecessarily expensive with shipping and duty and stuff. Um, I can't think of the place in the US people have suggested, but if you just search green coffee beans in your country, you should find something. <laughs> um, and then I just taught myself, I just watched a couple of YouTube videos. I was inspired by Isabel Page to roast my coffee. And I just figured it out as I went. And the first few batches weren't very good. They were under roasted, which very caffeinated. Um, 
there was very strong, <laughs> very, very strong. I started roasting them darker. I found it difficult to get a nice roast when it was hot out. I find it's a lot easier to get a good tasting bean when it's cold because I can control the heat process better. So, um, yeah. So, have I roasted flavored coffee? No, I've actually never seen flavored green beans for sale. I think the flavoring happens in the roasting process or after, but um, I've just seen green beans. So, um, yeah. So any other questions? I think I've touched on the ones that were sent to me beforehand. I was asked to talk about my tattoos. I've mentioned a couple of them, but the other ones I will bring up this winter when I'm having like band story time. And I was also asked to talk about the paint job, but because I'm coming up on the five-year anniversary of uh, being with Truck, I thought I would just tell a story at some point about our whole history together because when I bought this van I hated it and I had major regret it was so big and I felt like I was a sellout um, after living in a minivan for more than two years I had really tied my identity to living in such a small space and being so myself after upping uh <laughs> yeah so <laughs> it's just yeah silly things uh being human so uh do I have a tick list for peak bagging? I don't. Um, I really like granite. So I would just like to spend more time climbing granite mountains. Um, and I would really like to find somewhere really remote. And I don't care how low the elevation is or how crappy of a route it is. I would just like to find somewhere I could be the first person. I think that would be really cool. Um, that potential exists within British Columbia. Uh, but <laughs> it might be days of bushwhacking. So that probably won't happen when Frank is around. But I don't have a particular list of summits. Um, yeah, I don't really care how tall the mountains are or how well they're known. I just like to go out and it's just fun. I enjoy going uphill. I like a nice view, um, but I especially like if I can get hands on climbing on granite. Um, and that might be the Squamish in me talking because I spent a lot of years there climbing. I need to climb in Power River. Yes, I've climbed at the stacks there um, at the at Stillwater Bluffs. So I've done a bunch of bouldering there, but I haven't done any route climbing. I have visited the Eldred Valley, but I didn't climb because <laughs> I just wasn't in slab climbing shape at the time. So um, there's also lots of bouldering around where I am now. So if it's dry <laughs> when my van is done, that is one of the first things I'm going to go do for test drives. So uh, solo the pigeon spire, maybe someday. It wouldn't take a lot for me to get back into that shape. So yeah, Powell River is a really nice place. And it's cool to see people have been there. <laughs> hmm. So best, oh, best mountain you have ever climbed. Oh, man. Well, the one that was in a video um, about a month ago, uh, scrambling, I did two summits that day right before meeting up with Foresty. That one I've done four times. So I don't know if it's the best one, but it's the one I've done the most. So it's definitely up there in among my favorites. So um, just because it's it's just, you just quickly get out of the trees and then it's just like beautiful, mellow ridge and then some fun scrambling. So it's just uh, a pretty chill day. So um, have I ever seen rattlesnakes? I've seen two rattlesnakes, one in a Soyuz at the top of that hill I keep struggling on in videos. Um, and it was huge. It was huge rattlesnake. And it was like in the uh, concrete barrier between the parking and the outhouse. There's like the little holes and it just went in and hid. And then I got um, held up by one in Nevada um, before coming back to Canada when like all that stuff was going down last year. So there is a IGTV video about my rattlesnake encounter over on Instagram, which is the same name as I have here on YouTube. So you can watch my reaction to the rattlesnake. Uh, I filmed it as it was happening and I edited and put the video up before the snake had even left. <laughs> so it was really, really uh, quite the experience. And I heard it from inside the van and Frank was outside. So I totally panicked. But we, I had done snake aversion training with him, like not officially through like a course, but anytime I came across snakes, um, I would scare Frank and shoo him away and like tell him they were bad. So I just taught 
frank that snakes are like horrible things that you should stay away from so when the rattlesnake was like doing its thing at him he just like kind of like backed away and gave it like wide berth and came over to be with me so yeah like really grateful that he learned that that I took the time to do that with him so uh, my water filter the one I use for high volumes of water is the MSR Guardia filter it's a pump um, it is several hundred dollars it's a very good filter and the one I use on trail um, and just squeeze water through is called a Sawyer squeeze or whatever so don't get the mini um, get the normal squeeze or the micro but the mini is really slow flow rate nobody recommends it so those are the two water filters I use depending on the situation oh <laughs> Sasquatch encounters uh <sighs> that's I'm gonna tell that story another day but uh I had an unidentified large creature encounter that did not feel like any of the other creatures I had encountered so um <laughs> uh sometimes I tell Sasquatch or UFO stories on Instagram and I lose a lot of followers apparently people have a big problem with uh that kind of stuff so that's entertaining um <laughs> yeah so <laughs> um canoeing any interest uh, I've done a little bit of canoeing now that Frank's older it probably wouldn't be so scary but I'm not much of a swimmer for all the time I spend in water I never put my face in it I don't really like being buoyant so being in water deeper than where I can touch kind of scares me so I think I'd be really into canoeing or and also spending time at sea on a boat with somebody else who could kind of mentor me I don't know if it's the type of thing I would just take on um, and wing it type of thing. So, <laughs> um. <laughs> okay, so I see there's some Sasquatch and UFO fans. So, yeah, maybe someday I'll tell those types of stories. Um. Okay, all the photos I've taken of Frank, do I think that Frank has learned to pose? No, he has not learned to pose. He's gotten worse at posing over the years. And I spend a lot of time behind my camera, um, not so much taking photos now that I'm filming videos because my focus is on filming, but I've been practicing photography since I was about four or five. So I spent a lot of time with my face up to the camera and he's jealous of the camera. So he will just be like, <sighs> so he actually, when I pull out the camera, um, he plays hard to get. So all the great photos and footage I have of Frank, for the most part, is like kind of, I have to sneak it. Um, that's why there's a lot when he's sleeping, because he's cute. But he doesn't cooperate. He doesn't play along. He won't pose for photos. He's got too much self-respect for that. <laughs> um, yeah. So I see a lot of comments and not many questions coming in anymore. Of course. Oh, camera for filming. I have an iPhone. It's an iPhone 11. So that's what, all my videos are filmed on iPhone 11, except for some shots in uh, my very first video I posted four years ago was shot on uh, a Nikon D7000. And then I use a D7100 now. Um, and so there were some shots from that in my first video since I started like five months ago. But otherwise, it's all just uh, iPhone. And it does a great job if you choose the lighting wisely um this right now i'm on my laptop which is a 2005 so the webcam is pretty bad quality uh i wasn't thinking of that beforehand but yeah um mini camera technology has improved quite a bit in six years and i use imovie to edit um it was free and it was on my computer so i just use imovie um <laughs> yeah and um Maybe I would upgrade someday. There's some things I'd like to do um, creatively with editing videos that I'm just not able to do in this program. And I know other programs would help me do that, but it costs money and it's learning. So vegetarian, I'm actually a vegan. I have been for close to four years. Um, I've never said the V word on my channel, uh, but people who are vegan, have uh, it's pretty clear to them. <laughs> they know right away that I'm vegan, but yeah, I'm not here to recruit people to a certain way of eating or tell anyone how to eat. So that's why I don't use the word. I just show what I eat. Um, what's a good book on foraging? Uh, 
it depends where you are. I use edible medicinal plants of Canada, but if you just look up foraging plus your region, you can probably find a book for the area. I have a California foraging book. Um, I prefer more reference, like serious reference style than um, some are just like a bit more like, I don't know, artistic, like fancy, like kind of like, I don't know, <laughs> like not as much business. So um, there's also a book called All That Rain Promises and More, and it's a hip pocket guide to Western mushrooms. So if people are in the West are interested in learning mushroom foraging, that's what I use to teach myself. Um, I prefer hoppy beers. I love hoppy beers. Malty beers kind of make me sick. I react to them. So I prefer hoppy beers and especially uh, hazy um, IPAs. And I really like ones with galaxy hops, which they don't often distinguish the types of hops here in Canada. But when I'm in Oregon or California, I get a lot more into nerding out on beer because there's so much down there and so many good IPAs. So, <laughs> um, uh, have I been inundated with companies uh, yet, uh, like Jackery? No, not really. I've had um, maybe a dozen or so companies reach out, and I'm just like, I've never heard of your product. I don't have to represent it. I do not want to review on it because you probably don't hear what I have to say. I had one knife company. Oh, well, I have to wait while we're reconnecting. I don't know what you guys see when that's happening or if you can hear anything. No, connection is unstable. Oh, oh, I'm back. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, the connection is getting unstable because it's evening and people in this community are coming home. I don't remember where I was. I honestly... Oh, yeah. Company is about Jackery. Yeah, I had this knife company. They sent me like seven emails. And like, I'm a SOG knife person. Like, I am not going to represent another company when all I use is SOGs. All I've used is SOGs for more than a decade. Um, and they just would not leave me alone, and I didn't want to give them the time to tell them to F off, so they just kept sending emails. Um, but so far, nobody has offered me anything I would be willing to put on my channel, um, and that's fine. I don't really need a lot of stuff. <laughs> so um, uh, let's see. If I'm not answering your question, it's probably because I answered it earlier in the live stream. So. Um, yeah. 11 year old fan. Hello. That's awesome. I'm glad I keep my channel safe because I used to work in geology and I have a bit of a sailor's mouth at times. So I, I try to edit that out. So thank you for watching. That's uh, really exciting. Um, and hopefully your parents think I'm a good example. <laughs> um, have I seen the Alpinist documentary? about Mark andre Leclerc yet. I haven't because it's not out in Canada, but I was friends with him. So I'm familiar with the story and him and his life. And I would like to see the film someday, um, but I just have to wait for it to come available in Canada. Um, and yeah, it will be an emotional thing when I get to watch it, but he was a really awesome person, really, really nice person and really supportive of everyone he knew who, um, no matter what grade they climb. So it was it was really awesome having known him. I feel really grateful for that. So um, <laughs> yeah. Hi, Libby. <laughs> Sorry, I missed that part. Hi. <laughs> oh, yeah. So <laughs> cool. Um, <laughs> um, I'm just checking out the chat here, trying to see. Okay. Oh, get a VPN and then I can watch from a different country. I don't want to steal it. I want to pay uh, for the movie. So um, it's out in theaters in the U.S. right now. And if the border was open, I would drive down to Spokane to watch it. But the border won't let me in. So my ultimate goal for the channel, one million subscribers. <laughs> no, I just want to uh, give Frank a good quality of life and uh, maybe get a power set up. So that'd be nice. But. I don't have much for goals. I gave myself a year with the channel to see if it took, and it did, <laughs> sooner than that. So I'll keep making videos. Um, and when I'm tired, I'll take a little break and I'll come back to making videos because I find it really fun and I enjoy the feedback I get. So, um, yeah. But I mean, I guess if I 
if I was totally honest, I would love to be the biggest van life channel because I've lived in a van longer than most of them, <laughs> which is kind of silly. But um, and maybe if I'd started my YouTube channel eight years ago when I started van life, I would be the biggest van life channel because I probably would have been the first. But um, I don't really care. Uh, you know, if my channel got huge, I wouldn't know what to do with the money. I'd probably have to find a way to give it away or um, I don't know, <laughs> certain animal animal sanctuary or something or. Yeah. So um, oh, asking about merch coming out. I talked about this earlier, but I do have the sticker and I'm having technical issues with my website. So I'm hoping Monday or Tuesday, probably Tuesday, my store will be up and I will put the link everywhere so don't bother going to my current website it's old and it's there's no store so I'll let you know when I know um yeah so um okay so I've been talking for about an hour so I think I'm gonna say good night before the internet craps out again because that sucks um and uh, I have a question about what, what made me vegan. Maybe I'll talk about that in a future video. The stickers are going to be five US dollars uh, plus shipping because everyone's somewhere different. So I have shipping prices set to country. Um, yeah. And 100% of the profits from the stickers are going to go to Frank's surgery and medical care. Um, and if all that's covered and I'm still selling stickers and they're still making money, it will just go to his food and his treats. And um, yeah, so they're Frank stickers for Frank. Um, and I have some other designs in the works for myself, but that's not much of a priority. Frank is the priority. So this is the art for the sticker. Sorry about the refresh rate with the LED lights. But yeah, um, okay, well, thanks for coming to my first live stream. I'm less nervous now than at the beginning. Um, if I missed your question, I'm really sorry because it's a lot to, uh, it's just a lot. <laughs> I'm an easily overstimulated person, so I have not been able to keep up with the chat very well. Um, thank you for all the comments. I'm going to scroll through and read them after because, um, yeah, I just, I'm not good, great at multitasking. So thank you so much. Thank you for Dana for moderating and keeping it clean and nice in the comment section. I really appreciate that because I like this to be a wholesome place that everyone feels safe coming to. So yeah, okay, well, um, I do have a Patreon uh, that I really enjoy sharing. I <laughs> share stuff as it's happening. And so they, uh, they know what's going on there before it ever comes out in videos. My videos are usually a two week lag. Lately, they've been a one week lag. And when I'm done this project, I'm gonna go back to a two week lag because that gives me a lot of freedom to disappear off grid and enjoy the lifestyle that I enjoy living um, and sharing in the videos. So um, yeah. Okay, well, I hope you all have a great night. Thanks for coming by. Frankie, let's, let's get Frankie in the shot. Oh, hi. Hi, you say goodbye, Frank. He says goodbye. He says, I'm sorry I slept the whole thing but I'm waiting for my dinner. Should we go have dinner? Yeah, Frank says we should go have dinner. So thank you and goodbye. <laughs>